Hey, it's Fran. Over the last few weeks, I've been playing around with Blender, trying to make my renders look like sketched drawings. After a bit of experimenting, I think I've gotten the look pretty close to what I was looking for. It's nothing fancy, just a few modifiers on a grease pencil line art object or two, and a single procedural material, which is what I'd like to go over with you guys in this video. If you'd like to follow along, I put this posed Sailor Moon model up on Gumroad for free. Link is in the description. I'm using Blender version 4.0.2. So make sure you're on that version or higher. If you're on a lower version, the blend file may not open. All right, let's start off by adding some line art. Shift A, and then let's go Grease Pencil, Collection Line Art. With the Grease Pencil object selected, let's go to the Modifiers tab, and under Collection, let's choose Sailor Moon. But as we can see, there are no lines. That's because the line art modifier projects from the camera's view. So we need to add a camera. Shift A, come down here and add a camera. We can place this camera from our current view by pressing Control, Alt, and Zero. And now we can see the lines. They're a little thick by default. We can go back into the line art modifier and under line thickness, this will control how thick these lines are. We're gonna go with three. Now, as I orbit away from the camera, you can see how it's projecting these lines from the camera's view and it kind of breaks the illusion of these lines. This can get a little bit in the way if we're doing any editing and it's kind of hard to see if we're looking from a different angle. So let's split the viewport. We'll come up to the left here until we get this little crosshair and we'll drag to the right. And on this left side, we'll hit zero to return to the camera. Press N to pull out the right menu and under view, right here where it says camera to view, we'll click it. Now when we orbit around, the camera is stuck to our view. So we're always viewing from the camera's perspective. You can see on the right here, as we move around, the line art's being redrawn over and over and over as we move around. So now that we've always got a camera view that we can refer to over here, we can turn off these lines on the right viewport. We can do this up here in this menu, Selectability and Visibility. Click it and then come down to where it says Grease Pencil and click the little eye icon to hide those. So now we're free up on the right side to do whatever we want. Now on this left side, let's change this over to the uh, Material Preview Viewport Shading. My window's a little small here, so you can middle click and drag these. So let's come over and click here for the material preview. And as you can see, real time shading is happening here. You can see the actual shadows coming off of the 3D object. We, we don't want that. This is going to be a sketch, so we actually want all of this to be flat. And in order to do that, we're going to add some materials. Let's select her bun. It really doesn't matter. You can select anything in here to create the material. I'm just going to select the bun. And then down here in the material, we're going to click new. And under surface where it says principled, we're going to click this and come up to emission. And as you can see, the shadows have disappeared. It's just completely white. So we want to add this material to everything in the scene. What we can do is click A, that selects all. And you can see that her buns, which has the material on it, is the last thing selected because it is a different colored outline. It's a lighter orange. If it's not lighter orange, if something else is lighter, that means that's the active object. We want what we added the material to be the active object. So select the bun last and then hit Control L. This brings up your linked menu and we'll click Link Materials. That's going to copy the material from the bun to everything else. So now everything's completely white. There's no shading happening at all. No real time shading. And if moving around the camera gets in your way over here on the right side, you can click on it and just hit H to hide it. So now when you move it around, it's not going to get in the way. Oh, and one more thing. The white kind of looks dull. We can come up here to the render properties, scroll all the way down to the bottom and where it says filmic under view transform, let's change it from filmic to standard. Now it's going to be a bright white and not look so dull. Okay, so we have lines. Now let's make the lines sketchy. Let's select the grease pencil line art object again in the outliner. And this outline is going to kind of make it hard to see the borders and stuff. So on this left side viewport, let's turn off the overlays by clicking this icon. Okay, so with the line art selected, let's click on modifiers, add modifier, and let's choose noise. So the top slider, the position slider, is going to control how strong this noise modifier is. We're going to want to bring this down to bring it closer to the model. The next slider, Strength, controls the opacity. It's kind of randomly placing opacity. The next slider, Thickness, will add a random thickness to the lines. We can skip the UV slider. The Noise Scale is going to control how jittery everything looks. We're going to want to keep this one a little bit low. Okay, so it's starting to look a little sketchy. Next, let's add in another modifier. Let's add a Multiple Strokes modifier. Duplicates is how many strokes. We want this to be up to five. 
the distance is how far apart from each other each one of these strokes will be. We want this to be all the way down to nothing. We won't have to worry about offset, but we do want to click fade. Now, we want these multiple strokes to happen before the noise modifier, so let's drag it above noise. It's still looking like inked lines, so let's add opacity. And let's bring it down about halfway to 0.5. We need to add one more modifier, which is the length modifier. Let's place it above the multiple strokes. And what this modifier does, you can see over here on the left, it kind of overshoots the intersections, which kind of helps with the sketchy feel because like, it's never perfect when you're drawing. We don't need these to be super long, so let's drag these down to about 0 .04, 0 .03, somewhere around there. And you can see we kind of got some overshooting happening here. The start and the end is just both sides of each line. All right, now we can do a little cleaning up with our line art. You can see up here in the hair where I've got these different objects intersecting. They're creating line art in those intersecting places. So we can come up to the line art modifier and then under the edge types, we can uncheck intersections. And that gets rid of a lot of our problems. But one thing on this particular model, from this view, it's given us these extra hairs. I don't want them to be seen from this angle, but I have to have them there in order to get this silhouette from the side. So what we're actually wanting is just the silhouette from these hairs and not the contours. So under the edge types, if we change contour to silhouette, this is more like we want. It kind of hides these over here when it's in this view, and over here you still get to see them coming out of the side. But switching it to silhouette makes us lose all of our inner details, all of our inner lines. So let's switch this back to contour. So what we can do to solve this problem is have another grease pencil line art object affecting only these parts of the hair. So let's select these parts of the hair and the top part, because as you can see, it's not creating a line right here, so we want this to have a silhouette too. Let's hit M to move it to a new collection, and we'll call this collection Hair. Now, as you can see over here on the left, we're not drawing any lines on the hair parts that are in the new collection. So what we're wanting now is another grease pencil line art object that has the same settings as the one that we had before, only this one needs to be pointing to the hair collection and using silhouette instead of contour. I don't know of a way to copy this, so like shift D doesn't work in the outliner. What I found that I could do is add a new grease pencil collection line art and then in the outliner expand the tree for the new line art and our old line art. And we can click on the modifiers from our first one that we've already set up and drag them down to our new one and it'll copy everything over. Now in the new grease pencil object, let's go to the modifiers and under material if it's red just click here and select black 002. Let's change the collection to hair. And then down here where it says contour, change it to silhouette. Now our hair doesn't show up over here on the right side when it's in front of the hair. And as we pan around, it appears still in the silhouette. All right, now that we've got our sketch set up the way that we want it, we can start adding in detail lines. You can do this by marking edges in edit mode. Uh, for example here, we can select the bangs, go into edit mode. You can select some edges, hit control E, and mark freestyle edge. If you tab out of edit mode, back into object mode, you can see that the line has been drawn. So let's go back into edit mode and let's select some more edges. Control E, mark freestyle edge. And when we tab out, you can see that it's drawing all of these lines under her bangs. Let's go into the tiara because there should be a line that goes along the top and the bottom. Back into edit mode, let's select this loop. Holding down shift, we'll select this loop. Control E, and if you want, you can right click on Mark Freestyle Edge and add to Quick Favorites. Now, whenever you hit Q, your Quick Favorites menu pops up and you can just click Mark Freestyle Edge instead of having to Control E, find it at the bottom of this menu, tab out. And you can see that our lines have been drawn, our extra lines. Let's do this one more time on the ear. Tab into edit mode, we'll select a few edges. Q for Quick, Mark Freestyle Edge. And now we have an ear line. So we can do this with all of the places that we want extra lines to show up. Mark Freestyle Edge. And uh, there's quite a few extra lines to, to be added here. I'm kind of, I'm going to just kind of time lapse my way through adding all these edges.
Okay, now that we're done marking edges, there's one thing that's been kind of bothering me. It's how dark these eyelashes have been and uh, these little marks on their cheek. We can go up to our first line art object and we could just turn off the crease threshold and it should lighten everything up a little bit. It does lighten them up a little too much. We can darken these up a little bit by adding a new material. Let's click on these eyelashes here and in the materials, let's copy it by clicking this to copy to make a new material from this and let's change the color to just a little bit grayer. Let's actually add that to all of these features that are around the eyes. Selecting these lashes last, we'll do the same trick with the control L and then link materials so they're a little bit lighter. Okay, so we've got just about everything we need. We just need to make one more material. We're gonna make a procedural, like a hatching material, like you shaded it by hand. What I normally like to do when I'm creating a procedural material is I'll add in a plane, shift A, plane, and we'll move it above her. Press G and Z, and we'll kind of bring the viewport to where we're looking down on it. With this selected, let's click new, and we'll drag up this bottom window, and we're gonna create some procedural sketch hatching. So in order to see what we're doing over here, we need to switch this to material preview. Let's select and delete this principled, and let's shift A, and we'll search for a noise texture. Let's place it in and connect it. We're also gonna need a mapping node. Let's plug the vector into the vector. And lastly, let's get a camera data node. And we're gonna connect view vector into vector. Now what this camera data does is, no matter where you're viewing it, the texture is always going to be displayed directly towards wherever you're viewing it from, whether it be the camera or from the viewport. So it's going to be completely flat no matter what. You can see this a little bit better if we start to stretch the texture. Now when we move around, the texture is not moving. It's always placed directly in front of us like this. Okay, so let's modify this to make this sketchy looking. So starting off, let's change the type from point to texture. Let's stretch this Y value up. Let's bring it up really high, something like 80 something. Let's bring this X value down about halfway, maybe about 5.5. Over here in our noise texture, let's change it from 3D to 2D. Let's bring the scale way up, something like 250. Normally we don't sketch straight up and down like this, so under the rotation over here, let's bring this to somewhere around negative 45. And if you want to further tweak this, we can add in a color ramp and then place it between the noise texture and the output. And we can crunch this either way to get darker lines or to get lighter lines. You can also change the color of these if you want. Bring this up a little bit to make it a little bit lighter. Something about right there. Now we have kind of a fill-in texture. Let's name this Hatch. Okay, we'll move this out of the way and get back into solid view on this side. All right, let's start applying that material to certain parts of our character. Let's select her boot. We'll go into edit mode. Now this part up here, it stays white and this part should be shaded. So instead of just like trying to select all these, let's just select the top part here that's gonna be white and then we'll invert our selection by hitting control I. In the material tab over here, let's click the plus and we'll select our new material hatch and then we'll hit assign and it's gonna assign it to whatever we have selected. So assign. So let's add this to the skirt and the bow her choker, uh, the jewel on her forehead, the little headlights on her buns, and then on her sailor scarf thing, we'll invert it, and then add the hatch material and assign it. Oh, I almost forgot. We have, we have the floor. Let's select the floor. We'll add the white material to it. And let's actually, let's pull the floor into the Sailor Moon collection. And then we'll go into edit mode on the floor. With everything selected, let's mark all of these freestyle edges. And then we'll tab back out. Now the floor looks a little too clean, like the lines are a little too thin. Let's actually pull this out of this collection. Hit M to move it, and we'll make a new collection. And we'll just call this extra lines. And now one last time, we're gonna add one more grease pencil collection line art. Let's open it up in our original line art. Let's drag the modifiers over. That way they're copied. We'll go back into the new line art for the floor. 
Under modifiers, we're going to have to select the new material, change the collection to extra lines, and now we can kind of start modifying this a bit. Let's make the line thickness a little bit higher. Let's move the position a little bit. And then for the length, let's just delete this modifier out of here. We actually don't want this clipping into our character at all. And the last piece for this floor, let's select it, go down to the material, let's change the material to hatch. Let's create a new material for this just for the floor. Let's scale this down just a little bit, maybe rotate it some, and we'll lighten it up a bit by dragging this slider to the left and dragging the white to the left as well. That way there's just a little bit of sketch lines on it. If you want to do a little bit of tweaking, you can go into any of these and just tweak it a little bit. Like maybe those lines for the floor are a little too thick. We can bring those back down. So yeah, that's about all there is to it. This was a really fun little experiment, and I hope you enjoyed the process of faking the model into a 2D sketch. Oh, and I forgot to mention at the top of the video that also included in the tutorial files is a rigged T-Pose version in case you want to make your own poses and renders. If you're interested in the Sailor Moon that I modeled for this, I have a time-lapse video of it up soon. The real-time process video is also up on Grim Road. It's about 13 hours long and it's a little heavy on the file size so Gumroad makes me charge at least one dollar for it. Also, also, as I was editing this video, Vertex Arcade uploaded a very cool video going over getting a very similar result. So if you're looking for more info on getting a sketchy looking blender, go give their video a watch. Anywho, thanks for watching and I hope you guys are having a good day. Alright, bye.